Hola a todos. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Luis. The very truth is, I would like to start telling you why I'm here. Oh, you would be very identified with myself with many things I'm going to tell you. I started in age 12 years with uh, free software. You may be um, developers you, or not, but you are using software in your, in your everyday activities on your smartphones with Androids perhaps, or per perhaps with your browser. I've been always interested in freedom and liberty and pay attention to how systems, generally speaking, systems are easily breakable and vulnerable, uh, not only by agents, but other agents. From that moment on, I decided on getting involved in the free software because I was able to see what the code was doing. The, the code was sending my locations to God servers every three seconds. As of today, this happens a lot, many times. So I got involved in this. I did a Linux distribution. By name as Asterix, I name it Asterix because this will, again, I'm from Asturias, this region. And the idea is to move the operating systems, Linux and so on, around the world. Basically, my mother started working this one year ago, has to be able to use a Linux distribution and free software as she could be able to use a Mac computer. I was with this until uh, I was 15 years old, and then I started doing first login. From your computer, you, get, you can get into the website with your face through a webcam with free contributions to free software. When I was 15 years old, I was awarded the first and best European hacker being under 18 years old. Years old. Hackers has many nuances considered to be negative. The general definition of hackers, um, such as Linux Troy has, this guy says that a hacker is a person who uses a system in a way for which this system was not thought of. Uh, so the, the, the definition of uh, this definition has a bigger scope. We can use the computing pirate. Many mass media has just extrapolated this definition to the typical guy who did and with the I fake anonymous hood by uh, us uh, touching keys and buttons if you are but it makes no sense because if you're an, an attacker uh, at home uh, what's the point of creating anonymous but this is created by mass, mass media the other companies I was by vice president um, uh, the European Commission um, are concerned about cybersecurity. There are so strange things, and decisions don't pay attention. Cookies, for instance, cookies. How many of you are really bothered uh, by these cookies? The, 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 the network is telling you, do you want to store these cookies? I'm fucking bothered by this. So the, the vice president of the European Union dealing with the digital agenda, Nelly, Nelly, smart lady. Um, back at the time, she was about 70 years old. This Nelly, this Nelly was updated with the latest releases. Nelly has a big responsibility. He knew what she was talking about. Uh, there is an issue. The, the trap goes quicker than the rule. It's true, quickies uh, allows you to track, to, to track down on. But there are other very smart people who are giving a lot of um, uh, money with advertising. 90% of the revenue from Google is not from Android or, or uh, is AdWord. Advertisers, commercials. I was uh, like this. Uh, these people are giving me so much money and they're about to learn how to uh, do other systems. There were so many ways to make up for these cookies with other technologies. So the trap always goes quicker and uh, um, the rule, unfortunately. This is a big issue. Big issue because people use this to sell commercials and you can control it but other people use it for other purposes you are familiar with national security agency nsa since the snowden revealed us uh, what the 
type of light we were getting through. This is not the, the um, typical logo. It's a nigel with um, helmets, uh, spine, everything. Uh, this is not their logo. It's a promotional logo created by the Electronic Frontiers Foundation, devoted to protect uh, to protect privacy and secrecy, and they give support of free open source project. It's true that is the best possible description is that the, the eagle is a, the representative of the, the, the other values and with a lot of flags and we can see uh, all your data, all your data and uh, the eagle is listening to this data in a diabolic, like a demo way. It, they has um, a, a demon face behind uh, this logo. It, there is no air demon behind your um, real computer but all data are getting through this. As of today, we cannot compare what we can do now with this data compared to which is going to happen next time. Big data, for instance, uh, machine learning. This is only the beginning. It's true that this is having a lot of repercussion, it has been developed over the past 40 years. But it's true, this is going to, to, to have a lot of traction. I mean, into the startup world. I'm moving from San Francisco to Madrid and vice versa. So the in, uh, intelligence, in the artificial intelligence is getting into the whole thing. Many uh, companies with doing research, uh, artificial intelligence is, is a new trend. This new technology for everyday cases is Amy. Amy is my secretary. Amy does not eat. Amy does not sleep. Amy does not need absolutely anything at all, any other input from myself rather than my calendar. I put uh, Amy on, on copy and Amy speaks with everybody on that email to coordinate the meeting. How is this possible? Big, big data, machine learning, which are if then, if then things, and, and a bit of grammatical lesson. This all makes that when the robots receive the email, they know who we are referring to. This technology uh, has a use understandable by anybody. I don't need a, a real human secretary. You save money every every, every uh, month, but the real human secretaries not do not like it so much. But uh, but. If it's used by the NSA, many of these technologies are created by them. What would happen if what it can be exploited from our data is increased in the coming years? What would happen if they break all our encryption, which can happen in the time to come? All these secrets are revealed through IPS uh, encryption uh, and decryption. Yesterday, yesterday, uh, a standard published which says that NSA cannot tell, theoretically speaking, spy on you, but we do know that is not truth. They wouldn't spend billions and billions of dollars in big servers for nothing. That's not true. There is another worrying issue, which is this kind of attackers attackers to which we are paying for their actions. We are paying these attackers with our taxes. Um, um, people, uh, how the NSA may have put a backdoor in RSA cryptography, a technical um, primer for some Francisco products, which are the leaders in the world. And they published the mani manifest what is um, what we're going to, to, to keep NSA planted backdoors in Cisco products. It's like a terrorist attack saying, you, I'm going to send you over the encryption. And then we get reports that um, plain MSS messages just by terrorists, um, they don't use even encryption. Uh, you get into all the encryption library to the crypt everything. There are politicians who have no idea at all about uh, how things are working. There are more and more 
arguments and tenets about this. Back doors, technically, up and all, the United um, USA president says, I want to wrap up with the in encryption. You cannot finish and terminate an algorithm. That's impossible. You, you, you want to try, you can try a prohibited bit. Um, it's not that easy, but otherwise you that work and broken the whole world. Open SSLs and NSA backdoors in crucial parts of operating systems. This is a super severe issue. There are solutions and uh, applications that uh, someday allow us to be freer. I've been always a big uh, defender, protector of um, Linux. Linux gives you so many tools that allows you to protect your privacy. I, I don't only refer to Tor. Uh, Mac has also a super cool uh, tool, which is Cyber Speech, which says cyber profits, all the inbounds and outbound requests have to be authorized. This could be um, a bit boring, but you can create uh, hacker mainstream uh, rules to the mail server. But if something happens, you know what it's going to be. Tourist is all the time uh, pinging data into Google or NetVirus. What is NetVirus? Uh, it's a service updating the virus in remote control. The, you don't have to be worried about this kind of problems, uh, totally dumping over your hard disk. Uh, Tor, um, Face Tor, are you familiar with this? How many of you would use it? Uh, to knowing it is good every now and then f and to, to create uh, networking. Tor, I do think Tor gives us the power of recovering part of what we have been lost uh, over these uh, years in security and privacy. And Tor, you can download it as, as a browser in a similar way as Firefox. It's based upon, it's based upon Firefox. Tor connects to uh, other huge amount of computers online on this network, and your connections are routed through the um, uh, computers in such a way that the final server receiving the petition, the request, does not know who you are. This is uh, is very useful because we all know that our ISP is is, is obvious. We are revealing who we are, but we thought it's not impossible because they did it. They could, the Silk Road creator, the biggest port of selling drugs, uh, weapons, whatever, online, everything was free to use. Uh, Silk Road used to. Um, Bitcoins, and he was contacted by the police, and he used Tor. He used um, hidden service Tor, uh, such as Anonymous, uh, badly described by myself. Um, and the American agency spent a lot of money in getting the the decryption of the person behind sick road. It's not perfect, but the more people use it, the more secure and safer it will be. It's a fantastic tool for the purposes of um, privacy. Tails, uh, are you know, are you familiar with the Snowden? Did you see Citizen 4 uh, documentary? It's a masterpiece. Snowden reveal so much uh, leaks to the to the press i this documentary explains this very well to us is the reality Leia Poitras, this girl is recording literally snowden when he is first seen at the hotel it's super funny because uh, snowden she's talking about then she turns around uh, in, in the room and picks up the f long, f long line phone at the hotel. They could have been sniffing through us this uh, long line phone. So this is, this is a funny thing. Chaos is an operating system, the amnesic recognition systems. Chaos operating system does not leave you tracks or clues on USB in the computer. You do whatever you have to do. You encrypt it, your information, whatever. And when you take out the, when you plug the USB, it eliminates all the RAM memory, and this allows you to do leaks as uh, as Snowden did. You can be more anonymous than, for instance, uh, using your own uh, own encryption procedure, which is the next level. Not 
living traces. There are another two interesting options. A less punky, more oriented to the general public and domain, which allows us to use PGP system. It's um, it's been it's been used a long time. PGP system allows us to have a set of keys, a public key and a private key. With this public key, we can we can give it to people that can encrypt things that we can dis de decrypt with our private uh, key. This has been existing for a long time, but the key base is not being in use. Um, but this makes all the encryption closer to the user. Uh, when you see um, a green bar, it's OK, but the play the site, the website, and adding content against your doing the request knows what you're doing. It gives you communication side to side. Unlike with PGP, you have um, encryption. Keybase, for instance, allows you to associate your PGP key with your social identities. Everybody uses Twitter, Facebook. This is associated in such a way that is, this exchange of keys is not that complicated. It's also strange and funny how we can exchange PGP key with one, with one person. So this is simple. On Facebook, you guarantee you are yourself. The person enters then, they see your PGP key and period. They have a super cool security mode. Um, the web-based client can be hacked, but there's also a command line client that you can use, which is, is not user-friendly, but it, I can use it. And it allows me to encrypt uh, things for the people by, by using their username, which is more friendly user than the other one. Or, or you can cre create your keeper in Keybase and it's hosted by then encrypted with your um, password. And one name is, um, is more of the like. Um, uh, with blockchain technology behind the Bitcoin technology, Bitcoin. Oh, I like this this currency. I now will speak about um, Bitcoin in uh, the next minutes. Like I said, I, I'm more interested uh, with uh, open source backdoors. You are open uh, open SSLs, library doing encryption platforms, and and the backdoor is inside that. So somebody has put it. It's a super severe issue. That's why I'm in researching in inscription. So uh, open, open, open source have backdoors and good adva advantages on open source. But we don't have so many resources to counteract against the disadvantages. Medium-sized projects on open source is very complicated. That can be audited. No audits are doing on medium-sized projects. Uh, espionage issues related can put um, a back door, and it's done very well, and you don't notice. They are camouflaged as simple bugs in the code. Now. I am personally interested in something. I'm passionate about this uh, thing, which is Bitcoin. The Bitcoin. ¿Cuántos sabéis lo que es Bitcoin? So, how many of you know Bitcoin? How many of you have used it ever? How many of you know what blockchain is? Well, good number of people. Well, this is not often the standard. All right, for those of you who are not aware of it, Bitcoin is basically a decentralized currency and that means that there is no bank or regulator printing and controlling it and actually it's the users who control the nodes that is to say the nodes that validate the transactions so therefore that makes it fully anonymous it is not anonymous by default Fault, and it does not require any central regulating agency. So that opens up uh, doors to uh, freedom. Okay, many people thought that it was only used to for drug drilling, etc. However, now, well, uh, one percent of the transactions for drug trafficking are carried out in with bitcoins. 
however, what the other day the European Union wanted to study, you know, Bitcoin, some of the relationship with the terrorist attacks in France, and I'm sure that 99 percent of those people use dollars, because 99 percent of the things that happens in the world uh, uh, use dollars as a currency. So. I don't think that Bitcoin is so much uh, widely used, okay, as to say. And what is most interesting about Bitcoin is the technology behind it. So there is not a great technological advance. Uh, it has encryption a little less, but in terms of the game theory, it's amazing. So what I mean is that incentives are aligned correctly so that no one attacks the network and no one makes uh, that profitable or worthwhile. So I'll give you an example. Monetary transactions have to be recorded. So in case an ordinary co currency or a standard currency, so those transactions are registered in the bank registry. What happens with Bitcoin is that we have a network of computers that contribute the computational power so that the centralized register that they all share becomes unchanged. So those computers every 10 minutes agree on the status of the network. They go and say, okay, that transaction is valid, okay, it will go into a block. Think about a notary register page. You know that, well, it is kind of like that, but decentralized. So, agreement is reached every 10 minutes, and then those computers make money from resolving those uh, mathematical issues. So, let me give you an example. All the Bitcoin uh, blocks. Well, the previous, the next block has the hash of the previous block, okay? So, they want to prove that the previous hash has changed and it is not the same hash than the previous block had. It also does proof of work. That is to say, you apply computational power to a mathematical program and that mathematical problem has a level of uh, difficulty that changes so that at least one of those the computers uh, resolves it in at least 10 minutes. So the revolutionary side about this technology is that it eliminates the need to for trust. So because if we have a decentralized base and where we know that what happens is true, I'll give you a, a piece of information to know what will happen on the uh, a, a transaction uh, happening in Bitcoin, you will have to spend like 10 million euros just to change one transaction, one transaction, so half a billion dollars, which is not worthwhile. So my startup is a bit about that, okay? So I'm not going to bore you more about with Bitcoin. So Ethereum is basically what shows on the screen, but it's for peer-to-peer -peer computing. You may have applications being run, being executed in several nodes and throwing out a result. So in the future, we want, uh, I want contracts to be executed automatically. For instance, you may wage your bet. So if some conditions are required, are met, the money automatically sends out the person who has won the bet. And Augur is exactly the same thing, but for provision markets. And because it is anonymous and decentralized, may, you may have inside trading. So you may go and uh, bet that tomorrow Microsoft shares will increase. And someone may place a bet on that and say, I bet in 1 million euros. It's kind of predicting the future. It is fascinating. It's fascinating because it is anonymous and opens up these possibilities and opportunities. So this is a takeaway message. Traditional security is about centralized servers and people working really hard to prevent bugs from entering the system to make these servers impenetrable. However, in the future, everything will be much more decentralized. Using game theory is about aligning incentives in a correct manner to have decentralized networks uh, flawless, okay, with no single point of failure. Of course, we are talking about 
Bitcoin it is the most powerful network of computers in the world, ensuring that that network is secure. And for instance, that has connotation for security. For instance, your database. Can you right away notarize or certify your database? So if an attacker breaks into your database, you may notice it, you will notice it. So every time you modify your database, you sign that modification. But if an attacker uh, enters into your database, you will be able to know that that has happened and you can go back to the original uh, status. And my startup is about that. It's about notarizing all type of uh, data. And it is a very exciting use for security. It's amazing what you can do in terms of uh, security. You don't need to trust the parties anymore. You don't need trust anymore. You n know also when someone has changed your data, because internet data, digital data, are very easy to modify, to destroy, to change. However, the, what stays in that database it stands, it stands there forever. This is mind-blowing because incentives are aligned so that those computers do not make any changes as to what has happened in the last 10 minutes. Okay, If only changing one of the transactions costs you half a million dollars, imagine what happens uh, because this is exponential. So if you are into security, I would highly recommend you to go right away into this topic. And if you have curiosity for it, I would recommend you to download Bitcoin and to buy Bitcoins. It's a good time to buy Bitcoins. Now they are 300. They used to be 1,000. That was the best investment in 2015, buying Bitcoins. No, well, actually, it was worse than um, to buy, uh, to sell in 2014 because the value went down. And uh, well, it has a good future ahead of it. It is not that we would use it on a daily basis, but now banks are kind of wanting, uh, kind of want to embrace it into their system because it makes it more, it makes things safer, and it also improves operability. So it is a database which is shared, and where you may publish whatever you want. You may publish on their hash. You don't need to publish the banking transaction. And then you can go with your hash okay, and you say, okay, this is my banking transaction. And that has that hash. And that hash was in the blockchain okay, on the X date, on the X year. And that's extremely interesting. And this is what we do in Stampering, and which is, is like mind blowing in terms of security. So if you come up with any good idea, uh, my name is Luisa and I would like to get that email or communication from you. That's a great technology because it decentralizes. Decentralizing makes things secure and it gives back the freedom to the people involved in participating and interacting with the network. So you don't need to trust, you don't need to depend on a third party controlling everything such as it's a case of states. Some people are talking about decentralizing states through that technology has uh, multiple applications and at the end of the day make us more f uh, free. Okay, so security is all about that, making us freer than we are. Okay, this is all for me and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. How are you doing? All right, so I'd like to ask you, what do you think it should happen for main Bitcoin to become mainstream? And you also said that governments and institutions want to support Bitcoin. Or, um, what happens with freedom if they were to go into it? So for it to be mainstream, you don't need anything now, because out of the sudden, Bitcoin, well, and people in general thought that it was just as currency to buy uh, prostitution, weapons, and, um, and drugs. But now it is seen as a cool technology. And there is an American bank who wants to integrate blockchain into that, okay? At the end of the day, blockchain is Bitcoin. So bit, uh, blockchain is for certifying things, it's a certification thing. So mainstream is already. And 
as I said before, we are not going to pay with bitcoins tomorrow, but it will be like a backbone. It will be there operating behind us and making our life easier. And then, well, you told me, you asked me about countries. Yes, the European Union is reviewing impact of uh, Bitcoin in the French terrorist attacks, which is like known, okay, because they were communicating with each other uh, through SMS. So it's just a question of time. By the time banks will embrace it, will integrate it, it would be impossible for a state to say no, because at the end of the day, we all know who rules the world. Well, if GAP Morgan, like a huge bank, embraces, implements it, it okay, that's it, you know, it will spread over to governments. So I'm quite optimistic. I never thought that this would go as fast as it is going. This is just crazy. Bitcoin was not there. Well, seven years ago, Bitcoin was non-existent. And, well, it was the project of a person uh, that shows up with an alien from Japan. And now it is, has worldwide reputation. Game theory is so good. That's what makes Bitcoin so good. You know, I invite you to read out the paper, 14 pages. It would take a half an hour to read it. But it is a highly recommended reading for any uh, morning or afternoon when you have some free time. It is mind-blowing. Like, say, really, wow, this will change the world. And it is changing the world. Okay, question about bitcoins. You said that computers are running mathematical programs, okay? What programs are those or software? Well, it is very, well, the network agrees every sometime on a difficulty. A difficulty stands for a number. This is like a fresh code. Proof of work is kind of showing that you have contributed computational power to a problem. So in this case, they make hashes, okay? They have a number and they have to convert or transform that hash that has to be computed all the time. They have to be converted into a numerical series. And then if the number is below the threshold, it is validated. And if it is above the threshold, the network does not validate it. Well, if you know about hashing, you would find out that you can imagine that that is very complicated randomly with a hash. If you convert it to an integer, it should be below the threshold. And that's basically about it. And proof of work has very many utilities and capacities for security. For security. So if an attacker doesn't find it profitable to attack you because he has to use lots of computational power for the money that he will get out of it, uh, he will not do it, okay? So that's mind-blowing in terms of security as well. I have two questions. So what is the size of blockchain now? And why can you, well, uh, the maximum number of bitcoins that is allowed is 21 million. Well, actually, we are talking about 40 or 60 gigabytes for the blockchain. It continues to grow. The thing is that it should continue to keep its small size because it is decentralized. You know, I may be in my computer and I may have a, a bitcoin chain. Uh, running or operating. If it grows a lot, if you will need a supercomputer to have it, okay? Therefore, for it will become centralized. There are proposals for it to fit it, uh, or no, to increase the size of the block so that more transactions can be carried out because we are reaching up to the maximum number of transactions. But at the end of the day, that centralizes the network. If only you can have super, uh, if it, you can only use like supercomputers, um, then you will end up centralizing it. But this is centralized, okay? So 60 gigabytes, okay? And the other question is 
is 20 million, 20 million bitcoins by default. To be honest, if more than 51% of the Bitcoin network agrees on changing whatever, for instance, instead of 21 million, they make it, I don't know, 48, the limit will become 48. So this is like huge democracy. Bitcoin is like a massive democracy. So, so I wouldn't go into macroeconomics because I'm sure that economists know much more than me, of course. But roughly speaking, the money that we have now, every so often, gets devalued. However, the opposite happens with Bitcoin because there are only 21 million and there are more and more Bitcoins being generated. Bitcoins are being generated whenever a problem resolves a mathematical problem as a reward because it has contributed computational power to make the network safer or more secure. So we are at 12 million now. So it is one way to keep it limited and for its value to go up. And this is what we, it's, it's interesting to keep the network secure and secure. This is kind of, this is a theory. I don't know what are the implications at a macroeconomic level. There are studies and papers proving that it's positive and negative. But anyway, it is very, very, very well thought and very, very well designed. Hello, good afternoon, Luis. My question is, how about whether Bitcoin is inspired in a system um, Betty, which is like a neuronal uh, network of computers where the most is exploited from each computer. In that sense, yes, it is like that. It is about tapping or using or exploiting the computational power. However, SETI is like a freak out thing which is like really cool okay you participate in it but in bitcoins you have a clear incentive to make money if you make bitcoins and you can sell your bitcoin for three hundred dollars you can make money you make money yes and see it's okay because there is a network of people contributing the computation network but in the case of bitcoins there is a clear incentive okay it's something to make money, which is also part of the general or overview or mindset of these the geniuses, the geniuses behind it, okay? They have also aligned the objectives, okay? And that's where the genius lies. My questions are about concerns. First concern, what will happen with an event kind of black swarm, uh, something. So because the creator is anonymous, but we don't know whether there will be any vested interests behind that. I very much believe in decentralized networks. They offer good opportunities, but they also remove or take away the opportunity for yourself to be to be yourself if we have a system which is being fully decentralized well whether we are talking about services or computational power so we are removing the power from the lobbies from the big groups that currently hold the power however however we are directing that forwarding that to kind of uh, something which is uh, big uh, homogeny, but that would also be like a free state, but it would also uh, eliminate our signs of identity. What happens in the case of, uh, yes, black swarm events, if it were to happen? So very broad questions. I would try to be as short as possible in my answer. So, C2C had a good number of bitcoins, okay, because it was the first one to do the mining. Okay, he's got quite a lot of them and he hasn't moved them. If Satoshi were to move his all his bitcoins tomorrow, he will just sink, but he will recover. Having a centralized database has more than economic power. 
So regarding the macro state, some projects are very, very interesting. If you Google, if you type in decentralized Bitcoin and natures, if you have internet and Bitcoin, you can communicate information from one part of the world to another without going through a state, without the need for a state. So we are at a time when monopolies are being removed. So BMD, when everyone will use it in the world, will become a monopoly. But uh, after, let's say, over some time, probably RMB will be decentralized and there will be no one executing the service in a centralized manner. At the end of the day, all the centralized uh, networks are decentralized, okay? And that's democracy somehow. And then you may go and say whether NVIDIA, Intel, uh, with the largest uh, computational power, may end up owning and controlling 51% of the network. Probably the network will exclude them from it because they will classify them as the evil people, okay? Or uh, the, my answer is I don't know. If I knew the answer, I would be God, but it's still very interesting times are ahead of us, and especially 10 years from now. Hello? When you said that banks will implement blockchain in the networks, as far as I know, they will implement blockchain for the for the currencies, okay, for the currency that standard currency, the mainstream one that we all use. What would be the impact on Bitcoin uh, in terms of the use of it? And wouldn't it be uh, also an opportunity to strengthen, to enhance standard currencies versus Bitcoin? Oh yes, you have hit, uh, you have uh, hit the nail on the head. Yes, okay, they will be using layers, uh, layers that are shared by all the banks. It will no longer happen what happened in 2008, where banks started to distract each other, and then the system blew up. Yes, the blockchain could fix the, or improve the current banking system. That should not be a concern. Having a peer-to-peer -peer and such a secure, uh, website and that is decentralized is just like winning big big game and whether people will end up using bitcoin or not they will do it however it's a question of time it's a question of maturity people have to be ready for instance in the u.s i was the other day i was sent so oh, i got the credit cards of my company and they said that pin was a great innovation pin number was a great innovation and in Spain, for instance, I don't know, in, on the bus, you cannot really change, pay with your credit cards. Uh, things are going slowly, but uh, in some years' time, by the time people will realize that you don't need to centralize anything to do things, okay, Bitcoin will be just explode, will just be really, really mind-blowing, or will be a great revolution. I think it will take less than five years. It's just a question of understanding, understanding it by cultures. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.